Here's a multiple choice question for you. Which of the following presentations sound like they would promote a particular group of ideals, beliefs, or perspectives? Don't just change the channel. Why pop culture matters to feminism, activism, and social justice. Or, on men, women, and the rest of us. From a self-styled trans trailblazer. Or, is belief in God rational given the evils of this world? From a Christian philosopher. If you chose all of the above, then you understood the question in the first place. Obviously, each of those presentations, which were held at University of Nebraska-Lincoln, promote a particular belief system or set of values. Unfortunately, that's not how officials at the university see it. To them, there was only one presentation of an ideological nature in that list. The one given by a Christian philosopher asking one of life's most foundational questions. That's what student leaders for on-campus Christian group Ratio Christi found out firsthand when they submitted a request for $1,500 from a pool of money funded by mandatory student fees that all student groups are eligible to access. In Ratio Christi's case, they were applying for funds that would help cover the cost of an event featuring esteemed professor of philosophy, Dr. Robert Audie. Dr. Audie, who had taught at the university for decades before moving on to Notre Dame, had agreed to speak at the event offering students on campus an opportunity to hear his answer to whether belief in God makes sense in a world where evil seems to so often prevail. Like most undergraduates, students at University of Nebraska are required to pay more than $1,200 per year in mandatory student activities fees, a total that adds up to around $28 million per year at the state's flagship university. Aside from funding school-sponsored newspapers and student government, the funds distributed to student activities are used to promote a wide variety of progressive causes, like transgender ideology, radical criminal justice reform, and more. Ratio Christi student leaders were perplexed, to say the least, when their application was denied over concerns that bringing Dr. Audi to campus would violate a policy forbidding use of student funds for speakers of a political and ideological nature. Government entities like public universities can't censor speech they deem ideological, political, or even religious. That's a direct violation of the First Amendment. But the university's trampling of constitutional freedoms didn't end there. Along with receiving a vague definition of ideological, which the university defined as anything based on a group of ideals or beliefs, a definition that would also describe an overwhelming majority of student fees-funded activities, Ratio Christi was also told they could access student funds only if they would provide another spokesperson with a different ideological perspective at the same event. The university was violating Ratio Christi's First Amendment rights twice over. First, by withholding funds it regularly allocates to progressive campus groups, a clear case of viewpoint discrimination. And second, by forcing a Christian group to fund a speaker who would rebut Christian beliefs, a clear case of compelled speech. After weeks of trading emails, Ratio Christi realized that they would have to shoulder the cost of the event if they wanted to pull it off. To add insult to injury, an annual report from the Student University Program Council later boasted that it allocated $4,000 to the virtual event when appreciating diversity is not enough. It was delivered by professional equity and justice consultant Paul Gorski just a day after Dr. Adi's presentation. Our usual limit to funds for a department or office is $1,500, the report touted. However, UPC Nebraska had a surplus of money, and we were eager at the opportunity to spend it. Interesting way to build a surplus of money, you might say. And, as you might have already guessed, the university did not require a counterpoint to Gorski's lecture. Free speech protections from government censorship and speech coercion don't go away once you step foot onto a public university. That's why, with the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, Ratio Christi filed a lawsuit challenging the university's discriminatory censorship and unlawful attempt to compel speech. The First Amendment means that the government, including government-run universities, cannot pick and choose which views get a hearing in the public square. And, as the Supreme Court made plain in two recent cases, National Institute of Family and Life Advocates v. Becerra, and Janus v. AFS-CME. The First Amendment also means that the government can't force you to promote ideas that violate your beliefs. While some questions, like the age-old one Ratio Christi invited Dr. Audi to explore, are rife with complexity and nuance, 
Whether a public university can restrict student groups' freedom to express their views on that, or any other topic, is something that should never be up for debate.